What's going on, everybody? I have Matt Bream here. Covers the Oregon Ducks for Duck Territory in the 24-7 Sports Network. Here to talk about Cam McCormick, his crazy journey, his collegiate journey. is very exciting stuff to get into there. But Matt, I, I want to just talk about 2022 for Cam. Kind of what you saw from him this past season, type of player he is, uh, full season for him. Yeah, um, Cam was Oregon's second tight end this past season uh, for, for the Ducks. Terrence Ferguson, a sophomore, was their number one tight end. Um, Cam and another sophomore actually were kind of duking it out every week to be the two option, and you know, they kind of flip-flopped here and there. Um, he was their best inline blocker, uh, their best line of scrimmage tight end. Um, he wasn't really... Uh, a big factor, I would say, in the past game. He was involved. He, he got a lot of reps there, but he, he just didn't have a lot of targets. Um, but it was a season in which it started, and uh, he scored a touchdown in the first game at Austin Stadium this season, uh, wearing his close friend who passed away, Spencer Webb's uniform. Um and it, when that when that happened, it was kind of like, a, this is why he came back. And we'll get to the injuries, sure, down the road. But that was the moment why he came back, to, to get back on the playing field, to score a touchdown, and to honor his late friend. And then he stayed healthy, and he kept playing, and he kept playing. And then towards the end of the year, it was almost kind of like, wow, he made it through the entire season healthy what does he do next? Does he want to come back to Oregon? Does he, he has aspirations of getting to the NFL. Um, transfer portal wasn't really in a lot of people's eyes out here. Uh, so it was a little bit of a surprise when he went to the portal. Yeah, it, it is certainly a surprise probably because he, he had stuck it out, you know, his whole career. Let, yeah. let, let's get into that. So he finished last year, 10 catches, 66 yards, the three touchdowns, played all 13 games, the, the six starts, as you mentioned, kind of split in time there. So productive, but also as a blocker, uh, about 6'5", 260 is what he's been listed at, what I've seen him at. So his journey, uh, he'll be 25 years old when the college football season rolls around th this year, dealt with a lot of injuries. Can you summarize this? He was a 2016 recruit, former three-star guy, according to the 24-7 sports composite rankings. Can you kind of just summarize this? And we're, we'll kind of break it down, but it is a lot to summarize, a lot to get to, because it's very intriguing, very interesting with what he's been through already. Yeah, he signed with Oregon the same year as Justin Herbert, and Herbert is entering his fourth year next year in the NFL. Um, so he's had a long road. Uh, he was actually viewed as a really high-profile recruit coming out of Summit High School. Um, his junior year film was tremendous. He was a four-star recruit. And then he dipped down to a three-star because his injury started before he even got to Oregon. Um, early in his senior year, he got hurt, nasty knee injury. An ACL injury was involved in that. And he didn't, you know, he, he dipped because of that in a recruiting ranking perspective. And in 2016, um, Oregon's roster had four other tight ends on it, all four of them at some point were on an NFL roster uh, when they got through Oregon. So it was kind of deemed like, hey, he probably could play as a true freshman. He's not going to be able to play, though, until the second half of the season. Knowing what Oregon has on the roster, the staff just said it's not worth it because that was when freshmen couldn't play four games and still preserve their redshirt. So they basically deemed 2016 as a year to get healthy, get himself ready for the 2017 season. Uh, 2017, he played in a majority of the games for Oregon. He was healthy. He had a big game against Utah. Things were looking up. It was a promising season for, for McCormick. And you, you looked at him as like, maybe he starts in 2018. Maybe, maybe he, he for sure plays and quite a bit. Uh, and in 2018, he actually beat out Jacob Breland um, for the starting job at tight end. Breland uh, was supposed to be, no, excuse me, that was 2019. Um, but 2018, he, he played, he got hurt uh, week one of the season, really nasty injury again. Uh, 2019, he beat out Jacob Breland. Um, Breland ended up going on to have a massive senior season before he too got hurt. But 
2019, he played in a couple games, was lost for the year um, due to another injury that happened in 2018. Um, same same lower body injury. Uh, and he decided to sit out all of 2020 because the rehab process just did not go well. Um, and I think he explained it. He had a metal screw actually at one point sticking out of his body um, because of the injury and the rehab process got messed up and it, it just did not work. And so he, he used all of 2020 just to get healthy again. So he missed all of 2019. Um, he missed all of 2020. And then in 2021, um, there was just this hope that he would get out there and he just never could. He, he, he couldn't get himself healthy for the 2021 season. Um, and actually hit, sorry, he has so many injury seasons that I, I get these kind of confused. Uh, 2021, he played one game. He did not play in the opener. They preserved them against Fresno State. He made a huge catch to convert a third down at Ohio State to move the, the, the drive. Uh, and on that play, he had another season-ending injury. Um, that, that's how it happened. Uh, he has so many injuries, it, it, it's, it, it, it truly gets crisscrossed. Um, and so he missed all of 2021 except for uh, one game. And he made the catch. He made the first down. He made the play. And that was like the biggest thing he cared about. He's like, I don't care. I'm out for the year. I'll, I've done this before. I'll be back. I, I made the, the critical play for our team to get a first down to keep moving down the field. Um, and then this season he was healthy. And it was one of those deals where it was kind of like, when's he going to get hurt? It, it, it's, it's happened every single year. When's, when's he going to get hurt? And it never did. And I, I think his story is pretty inspirational, pretty awesome. It, it, they should make a movie about it. Um, he's a really good kid. And, and calling him a kid almost now feels wrong because, <laughs> like I say, he's going to be beyond 25 years old when, when he plays for Miami. Um, but he's not the player he was when he arrived, nor should he be expected to be because of all the injuries that he had. But really good kid, really good family really good blocking tight end um, at Oregon. It was very clear the last couple of years, you know, if he could have stayed healthy, he was their best guy. Um, big body and looking for probably an opportunity to showcase himself to, to get to the NFL because reps at, at Oregon, he was going to play. He would have had a role on this team, but he wasn't going to be a starter. And I think everyone kind of, when he entered the portal and said he was leaving, uh, I think everyone kind of was like, okay with it from a fan base perspective, the media perspective, totally understood it, but everyone kind of understood like the, the dude has put in his time at Oregon. He's graduated. He's been a really good um, representative of the school off the field. He's been engaged in the community um, and he just wants to play. And that, you know, that was not going to be an every down player at Oregon. Matt, yeah. And his journey and, and yeah, it, it'd be easy to lose track of all everything he's been through. And I'm sure he's had a hard time uh, keeping everything in line here. It, it, it's very interesting the way it w- worked out a few years ago. He actually was granted an extra couple of years of eligibility and yeah, players two years at Miami. Yeah. You could, which would be number years, eight and nine. And, and the way it works and people that aren't familiar, you can apply at any point. Sometimes it happens at, towards the end of your career, but you can, it can happen during your career. That's what happened with current uh, Miami defensive lineman, Jake Lichtenstein, who, who battled some injuries at, at USC uh, with Cam, the things you're talking about him, his inspirational journey. What, what, what is it? What, all this stuff that he's been through, what, what does it say about him? The type of person he is, the player, and inspirational for, for a lot of people that they're either down and out or going through it or current teammates. I, I can only imagine what, what his uh, presence could be and, and the things he could share with people. What, what, what can you say about him as a person there? Maybe his leadership qualities as well, because he'll be coming in, you know, with, with a lot of experience in terms of what he's been through and obviously at, at 25 here. Yeah. I mean, he, he will be a culture guy. He will be someone that Mario will lean on in that locker room. Um, to pull guys together. He's, he's seen Mario's coaching style. He's seen the ducks get to a Rose bowl under Mario Cristobal and win a Rose bowl. Um, he didn't play that season, 
Um, but he was there and he was involved in, you know, he was a guy that showed up to camp. He was a guy that showed up to practice, even though he was hurt. You know, they, they have a rehab group is what they're called at practice. And, you know, he, they're off to the side doing their stuff. And yeah, he was a regular guy during, you know, those rehab since, even though, you know, for a majority of his career, he was he knew he wasn't playing that week. He knew he wasn't playing three weeks from now, but he, he still showed up. Um, he, he will represent Miami. Well, he will um, be a locker room guy. He will help build the culture that Miami is trying to build under Mario Cristobal. Cause he's been through it. And, you know, like, look, he could have stayed at Oregon and, and, and played a year or two more years of college football. And uh, he, he could have helped Oregon, but he, you know, he's a guy that's from Oregon. He's played seven years of college football at Oregon. Uh, he wants to experience something new. And I don't know the tight end situation at, at Miami off the top of my head, but if you told me as a 25 year old, like, Hey, go to school for a little bit, try and live out your dream and you can do it in beautiful Miami. Like go for it, try it, see what happens. And that's what Miami has been hoping to do in recent years with the transfer portal, getting guys in, maybe the older guys that want to change the scenery for whatever reason, you know, take advantage of, of, of it is if even it's only a year or so at Miami. Yeah. The, the tight end position at Miami, just for Miami fans watching this, obviously Will Mallory moves on and it's essentially open. You know, they got some good young talented guys in there that they're intrigued by, but we'll, we'll see how it all play, play, plays out. The tight end position has always been important in the offense at Miami, regardless to the coordinator, who the coach, is Matt, you know, going back to, to culture and things like that with Coach Cristobal and and with Cam, they they won a lot of games at Oregon, ten and three this past year. Just that winning attitude with what he saw it takes, uh, either being a part of it or or watching closely. What, what do you think that can do for a program like Miami, a, a program that's trying to win games, coming off this disappointing five win season? Yeah, I mean M- Mario uh, at Oregon assimilated not assimilated but collected the best talent we've ever seen from a roster standpoint um and they were able to capitalize on usc being down um they were able to capitalize on washington being down and really put themselves in a position where today like dan lanning you know he assumed a roster that had some holes, no doubt about it. Like they, they had some weaknesses that, that Mario left behind, but he had a core still intact. That was really good. And with the, the core group returning and some mixed guys at Oregon, they had a really good season this season. They won 10 games and won their bowl game. Um, Mario's trying to do the same thing at Miami. And I, I think you can, I can, undoubtedly say like talent will not be the issue for, for the Canes and Mario is a tremendous motivator. Uh, You know, some of the best locker room speeches that we've seen, whether it was Instagram lives or what, you know, that that they did not want out uh, or whether it was, uh, you know, in-house production that they've done, you know, Mario is a motivator. He knows how to motivate teams. He knows how to cultivate uh, a, a strong culture. We saw that in 2019. I think towards the end in 2021, um, some of that was fractured a little bit. There was a lot of pressure, but I think some of that was also behind was Mario leaving. And that factored into kind of the, the, the locker room there a little bit in 2021. But that 2019 team, uh, really tight bond, really big culture. And they were one of the best teams in college football. And at that point, they'd recruited well under Mario, but they were not a team made up of primarily his guys. Um, There were still some holdovers from previous years, and he was able to get them to buy in. And um, I think it says a lot about Mario Cristobal that when he was the offensive coordinator or co-OC and Willie Taggart left, that the team basically hired the players. When I say the team, the players basically forced the hand of Oregon's athletic director to hire Mario Cristobal to become their head coach. Um, they made a petition saying like they want their voice heard. They want Mario Cristobal to be the head coach. Um, and it wasn't just like offensive linemen. They led the group, like no doubt about it. They were the ones that spearhead the effort. 
Um, but it was offense and defensive guys. And you can't, you, you can't be a good motivator. You can't be a good culture builder uh, if, you know, and, and do that as an offensive coordinator. And so, you know, Cam was part of those teams. He was part of that process to go to the, off, the, the athletic director to hire Mario in-house to, to replace Willie Taggart. Um, and so you're just adding another guy. He's at, there's a couple of Oregon guys there too that, you know, showed up last season that will continue to be guys. That I'm sure Mario will lean on of the other places as like he likes to say it of, you know, we saw success. These guys know, you know, know what it was like and, you know, follow with follow their lead. And as you mentioned, Cam's a third former duck to play for Cristobal and now at Miami, a couple offensive linemen and Dennis and, and Logan there. So, Matt, your time is very valuable. Uh, great insight here uh, on Cam. A lot of people, as you mentioned, are inspired by his story. I'll be curious to see how his story goes moving forward. But thanks for taking the time to do this. Absolutely.